This is the Lock Picking Lawyer, and what I have for you today is the Master Lock, Model 1670 Locker Combination Lock. This lock, or a variant of it, is probably the most popular lock on school lockers in the United States, and it has two features that make it particularly well suited for the school environment. First, it has the keyed entry feature, which allows school administrators to open the lock without looking up the combination. And second, it contains five preset combinations that can be rotated each school year, such that a combination won't be reused until the last student who used it is no longer at the school. We're going to do a few things with this lock today. First, of course, we will pick it open. Second, I'll talk about the design weaknesses that would allow this lock to be decoded. And finally, we only have the first of the five combinations, so I'm going to show you how to figure out the other four combinations and also how to switch the lock between them. So first, let's get to picking. You can see we have a pretty tiny little keyway here and bidding that is above average, so it should provide some challenge. To get into that tiny keyway, I'm going to be using this little tension wrench from the Peterson Flat 5 and probably a standard hook in 18 thousandths. So one is loose, so is two, three, four is binding, got a little click there. Five is binding, got a click out of five. Back to the beginning, nothing on one, two, three is binding. Got to click out of three. It should just be one and two now. Number one is binding, and it looks like we got it open. You can see the bolt retracted. Okay, let's relock this. And next, I want to talk about the features of this lock that would allow us to figure the combination out if you don't know it. Now, earlier I said we were going to decode it, and I think I probably used the wrong word. We're going to brute force the combination, meaning dial all potential combinations. But if you do it intelligently, it's actually a pretty quick process. Now, this has a 50-digit dial and a three-number combination. That means the number of potential combinations is 50 cubed, or about 125,000. However, there are three weaknesses to this lock that let us narrow it down. So first, the third digit of this combination actually doesn't matter at all. We're going to dial it in. The combination is 40010. So let's go. We're going to turn it right a couple times and stop on 40. Then we're going to turn to the left, pass 0, and then stop on it the second time. And then for the last digit, we're going to turn right, but the lock actually stops before you get to the last digit. You just keep turning right until the bolt retracts. So since the last digit doesn't matter, we just narrowed this down from 50 cubed to 50 squared, or from 125,000 possible combinations to 2,500. The next weakness we can exploit is the size of the gates. Now our combination again is 40010. But this lock doesn't really require precision. So let's turn it past 40. We're on 39. Let's actually do 38 and a half. Our next digit is 0. Let's stop a little bit early. Let's see, 49. You can see we still opened it up. I did some testing, and the gates seem to be about 2.5 to 3 digits wide. So let's be conservative, say 2.5. What that means is that every number on this 50-digit wheel can be tested by trying just 20 positions. So we just cut the number of possible combinations from 50 squared, or 2,500, to 20 squared, which is only 400. The final weakness we're going to discuss allows us to test those 400 combinations without fully dialing the wheel. Or, I'm sorry, without fully dialing the full combination. So I know that the first digit is 40, so let's just use that as, as an example. Let's say we are testing out 40 as a first digit, and then for the second digit, we would have to pass that digit once and then stop on it. So I turn it to 40. Now from this position, I can test all possible second digits. So what I would do is turn it forward two and a half, and then turn it back. And if I can get within five digits of the number I just tried, I know it's not the correct one. 
So I'll do from 42 and a half to 45. Again, if I can get within five digits, I know that's the wrong one. 45 up to 47 and a half. Again, I can see it's not the right one. Just keep advancing, and I happen to know zero is the correct one. And you can see we can't even approach the zero again. So we know we had the right combination, which also means it opened. Now using this method, you can get through all 400 combinations pretty quickly. I did some calculations and you can go through every possible combination in somewhere in the 20 to 30 minute range, which means on average, you're gonna open this up in about 10 to 15 minutes. Now that's not a small amount of time, but it's also not a particularly long time to brute force a combination lock. Okay, finally, I'm gonna show you how to figure out the four combinations to this lock that we don't know and how to switch between them. The important thing to remember about these is that all of the combinations are related to each other by an offset. And by that I mean if the, well let's say the combination is 10, 20, 30, and the offset is five, then the second combination will be 15, 25, 35. The issue is figuring out the offsets between the combinations because the offset between each one is different. Now you can determine the offset if you pay careful attention during the change process. So before we start, let's make a small chart here so we can write this down as we go along. Okay, there are five different combinations. Then I'm going to have a column for our offset and for the combination. So for the first one, we know it is 40, 0, 10. And let's go about figuring out what all the rest are. So the combination, um, let's see, to change it, there is a essentially a six step process. First, we turn the dial to the right or clockwise until we're at zero. Then we unlock it with the key. Then there's a small button on the back. At this point, we can press it in, hold it down, and turn the combination two digits in the clockwise direction. We then relock it with the key, and we turn the dial until there's a click. Okay, I'm sure you heard that because it's really loud. The combination is now changed, but here's the important part. If we pair, pay careful attention to how much the dial turned before we heard the click, we can figure out the offset. Here it turned between six and seven positions, so let's round that up to seven, and that's our offset for the number two combination. It's actually negative seven because we were turning the numbers backwards. So let's go to the chart here we have a negative seven offset. That means we subtract seven from each of these digits. So our second combination should be 33, 43, and three. So let's test that out. 33, 43, and three opened it up. Okay, that's pretty good. Let's, uh, let's keep going, see if we can figure some more out. We turn this till we hit zero. Insert the key, unlock it. Turn it two digits, clockwise. Relock it, and let's turn and listen for our click. Okay, it was between four and five, so let's round up to five. That's actually negative five, so subtracting five from each of these, we get 28, 38, and 48. So again, let's try that one out. 28, 38, and we've got it open. Okay, let's keep going, get it to zero once again. Oh, bolts are loosening up here. Okay, let's listen for our click 
and it's between five and six, which means our offset is negative six. And we have a combination of 22, 32, and 42. Once again, let's try that out. Let's see, 22, 32, and once again, we have got the combination. And to find the final one, Okay, it looks like it's between seven and eight. So let's say we have an offset of negative eight. That should make our next combination 14, 24, 34. Let's try it out. 14, 24, and it opened up. Now the interesting thing here is that each of these offsets, if you were to take all five of the offsets, they should add up to 50. So I could take a good guess on how far we're gonna turn this wheel before it clicks here. Let's see, we have 12, 18, and 26. So we should have a, a 24 offset here. So let's turn it back to the normal combination and see if that is correct. So we should have a long way to turn before we hear that click. Yep, right on the 24th digit. So to get back to the first digit, we have a negative 24 offset. So this video has already run long enough. Uh, so that's it for today. I hope this was helpful. If you do have any questions or comments about this, please put them below. If you like this video and would like to see more like it, please subscribe, and as always, have a nice day. Thank you.